of number 1, no? f of 1 is equal to 1 to the 4 minus 7, 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 6. So if we're going to evaluate, this will be 1 minus 7 plus 2 minus 6, which will give you a negative 10. Letter B, so we have f of x equals to 10x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5, where in x equals to negative 3. So f of 3, f of negative 3 is equal to 10 times negative 3 cubed plus 4 uh, times negative 3 squared minus 5. So if we're going to evaluate this, this will give you negative 270 plus 36 minus 5. Therefore, the value will be negative 239. For the letter C, so we have in here uh, f of 2 squared. So first one, we need to get f of 2, then we're going to square it. So f of 2, so we have to the 4 plus 5 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 plus 3. So 16 plus 40 minus 4 plus 3. So if we were to evaluate that, that will be um, 55. No? And then 55 squared. So, this will be 3,025. So, that will be the final answer. Let us evaluate f of x equals x to the 4th minus 7x squared plus 2x minus 1 at x equals 1. So, we need to substitute all the value of x as 1. So, this will be f of 1 equals 1 to the 4th minus 7 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 6. So, this will be 1 minus 7 times 1 squared is 7, plus 2 times 1 is 2 minus 6. So, adding like terms, we're going to have 3 minus 13. 3 minus 13 is negative 10. And that is your final answer. Okay, let us evaluate f of 6 equals 10 x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5 at x equals negative 3. So, all of the value of x is equal to negative 3, wherein we're going to have 10 times negative 3 cubed plus 4 negative 3 squared minus 5. So, negative 3 cubed is equal to um, negative 27 times 10 is negative 270 plus negative 3 squared is 9 times 4 is 36 minus 5. So, the value of f of negative 3 is equivalent to negative 239. So, we need to find f of 2 squared. So, all of the values of x will be 2. So, f of 2 is equal to 2 to the 4th plus 5, 2 cubed, minus 2 times 2, plus 3. So, so we have in here, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, plus 2 cubed, that is 2, 4, 8, so that will be um, 8, minus 2 times 2, plus 3. So, this will be 16 plus 5 times 8 is 40 minus 4 plus 3. So, in here, you're going to have no, uh, 19 then plus 40 minus 4 is 36. So, you're going to have in here 6 plus 9 is 15 carry 1. So, this will be 55. And then, you need to have in here f of 2. So, you just need to square 55. So, f of 2 squared is equal to 55 squared. Fifty five squared is equal to 3025. So, that will be your final answer. Okay, so we need to factor x plus 1 times x squared minus 5x plus 6. So, this one is done already. So, that will be x plus 1. And then, we're just going to have no, x squared. So, that will be x times x. Then, you need to think of factors of 6, which is um, 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Then, if we're going to add 3 plus 2, so we're going to get 5. 
So since the sign of 6 is positive, so we need to have um, a same sign. So that will be a negative since our middle term is a negative 5x. So negative, negative. So for example, let's have x times x, so that is x squared. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. No? Negative 3x. Then x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 3x plus negative 2x, the answer is negative 5x. And negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. So this will be the factor of x plus 1 times x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, let's factor out x squared minus x minus 6 times x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this one we have x times x. And then you have 6, the factors of 6. Uh, we have 3 times 2, so let's try 3 times 2. Then let's take a look. So we have a negative sign. So we're going to use um, different signs. And then we have negative x, a negative for your middle term. So therefore, the higher value must be a negative. So in here, let's try negative 3. Then we have a positive 2. Negative 3x times x is a negative 3x. Then let's have 2 times x is 2x. So negative 3x plus 2x is a negative x so this is done already and then let's have the other one so we have x and x no x times x x squared then we need to think of the factors of 9 which is 3 times 3 then if we're going to add 3 times 3 so we can get 6 so let's try 3 and 3 then we have in here a positive therefore we must have uh, both signs and then we have a positive in here so it must be a positive so, x times x is x squared, 3 x times x is 3x, x times 3 is 3x, 3x plus 3x equals to uh, positive 6x. So, 3 times 3 is 9. So, this will be the factors of letter B. Okay, let us factor x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. So, in here, we're going to use synthetic division. Let us use x minus 2. As our first divisor so let's have the zero test so therefore in here we're going to get x equals positive 2 so the divisor that we have in here so you have 2 then kindly write the numerical coefficient of the dividend so 1 3 negative 4 then negative 12 and then bring down 1 1 times 2 is 2 3 plus 2 is 5 5 uh, times 2 is 10 10 minus 4 is 6 then you have in here 6 times 12 is a positive 12 negative 12 plus C, uh, 12 is 0 therefore 2 or x minus 2 is a divisor now um, we're going to have this no? so x squared plus 5x minus uh, plus 6 no? then we're going to um, get the factors so, what do we have in here is x times x. So, factors of 6. So, we have 2 and 3. So, let us use 2 and 3. So, in here, we have a positive 5x and a positive 6. So, we're going to use both signs. That is a positive. So, we're going to have x times x, x squared. 3 times x is 3x. x times 2 is 2x. 3x plus 2x equals to 5x. Then, we are going to multiply 3 times 2, which is 6. So, in here, the factors of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 is equivalent to x minus 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 2. Final answer. Okay, so let's describe the property of the polynomial function f of x equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared. So, let's have the standard form. This is already in the standard form. So, we're just going to rewrite it. So, standard form, we have f of x equals x to the fourth 
minus x cubed minus 2x squared. And then, let's have the leading, the leading term. So, the leading term is the term with the highest exponent, which is x to the fourth. Then, the next one is the x-intercepts and its multiplicity. So, let us first factor it out x to the 4th minus x cubed minus 2x squared. So, factor out x squared. So, we're going to have x squared minus x minus 2. So, what are the factors of 2? So, we have 2 times 1. So, we're going to use 2 times 1. Then, the highest exponent, uh, the highest, um, the higher value must have a negative since the middle term is a negative x. So, negative 2 then positive 1. And then, so what are the values? So, we have x squared equals 0. So, x equals 0. So, we have the multiplicity of 2. And then, we have x minus 2 is equal to 0. So, x equals to positive 2. What else? x plus 1 equals 0. So, x equals to negative 1. So, we have in here 0 multiplicity of 2. So, we have a positive 2 and a negative 1. Then, let's have the y-intercept. So, how are we going to get the y-intercept? For us to get the y-intercept, we need to let let uh, value, uh, let x equals to 0. So, we have in here 0 to the 4th, 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 squared. So, the value of the y-intercept is 0. No? Now, uh, let's have the number of turning points. Number of turning points. So, the number of turning points, so it must be degree minus 1. So, what is the degree? For us to have the degree, it is the highest exponent. So, the degree for us is 4. So, this will be 4 minus 1, which is 3. Therefore, the number of turning points is 3. Now, let's have the possible end behavior. So, what are the possible end behavior? So, we're going to take a look on the leading term. So, we have x to the fourth. So, we have a positive um, leading coefficient with this positive 1. So, um, a positive 1. Then, the, uh, the degree that we have is 4. And 4 is an even. So, we need to have... no a sub n is greater than 0, then we have even. So, if this is the basis based on our uh, table, so the end behavior will be rising both sides. So, in sketching the graph, we need to take a look on the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts. Then, we're going to plot it out, no? plot the points. And then, so we have 0, 0, negative 1, and 0. So we have 2 and 0. So this is negative 1 and 0. And then, let's take a look on the number of turning points. So the number of turning points that we have is uh, 3. And then, the end behavior must be rising both sides. So in here, we have rising both sides. So we have rising, okay, turning points. Okay, so we're going to have this one. both sides. Number of turning points, so you have 1, 2, 3. So we have 3 turning points, rising on the left and rising on the right. So we have rising on both sides. So this one is the graph of f of x equals x to the 4th minus x cubed minus 2x squared. Okay, so let's have first the standard form. So, we're going to multiply x minus 1 squared times x plus 1. So, let's have the standard form. Standard form is equivalent to uh, f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1. Na? So, in here, the leading term that we have is equivalent to x cubed. And then, let's have the x-intercepts. So, what do we have in here? So, we have 
um, x minus 1 squared is equal to 0. So in here we have x minus 1 equals 0, x equals to positive 1. So we have multiplicity of 2. So we have 1 multiplicity of 2. What else? So we have as well as negative 1. Then let's have the y-intercepts. Do we have constant in here? Yes, so that will be the y-intercepts. Because in here, as your, your cube, minus your squared, minus 0, plus 1, so the value is 1. And then the last, uh, then the next one is the number of turning points. The number of turning points is the highest uh, value or the highest um, exponent is 3. So, the degree is 3. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So, we have two turning points. And then, the behavior. The end behavior. No? Since the leading term is having a positive leading coefficient. So, A sub N is greater than 0. And then, in here, the degree that we have is an odd. Okay. So, we're going to use... Um, falling in the left and rising on the right. No? So, this one we have falling. Then, we have rising. Falling the left, rising on the right. In sketching, so we need to have the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Then, we're going to plot the points. And then, you need to take a look at the number of turning points. So, the number of turning points is equal to 2. And then, the end behavior. So, we're going to have falling on the left and then rising on the right. So, we're going to have this one falling. And then, we have uh, negative 1 and 0. Uh, and then, we have uh, 0 and 1. And then, we pass through uh, 1 and 0 and then going up. Okay, okay, there you go. Then, how many turning points? So, we have two. One, two. So, this is the graph of f of x equals okay, x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1. Amazing morning. Let's have learning task 3, week 1 and 2. Let's have the first one, which is a polynomial function. So, we need to take a look that the polynomial function must have exponent, no, that are said to be whole number, no fraction, and no negatives. So, the answer in here is letter A. For number 2, what are the zeros of P of X equals X cubed minus 6X squared minus X plus 2? So, using the synthetic division and factoring, so you're going to have letter C. 6, negative 1, and 1. Let's have number 3. How many turning points does the graph P of X equals X minus 7 times X plus 4 times X minus 2 have? So, if you're going to multiply X times X times X, you will get X cubed. So, for us to get the turning points, we need to deduct 1 from the degree. So, the degree of the function is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. Therefore, the turning points, no, there are two turning points. So, letter B. Number 4, what are the three consecutive positive integers such that the sum of their squares is 149? So, let us have the representation. X is the first number. X plus 1 is the second number. X plus 2 is the third number. So, let's have the equation. X squared plus X plus 1 squared plus x plus 2 squared equals 149. So, uh, uh, let us evaluate this. Now, after evaluating, we come up that x equals negative 8 and x equals 6. So, we're going to get 6, a positive number. Since um, one of our limitation is a positive integer, so we need to have a consecutive positive inti integers. So, we're going to use 6. So, x equals 6. So, x plus 1 is 7. x plus 2 is 8. So, the answer will be letter B, 6, 7, and 8. What is the y-intercept? So, we're going to let x equal 0. 
So, in here we have 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 6. So, we come up that y intercept is 6. So, that is letter D as in dog. So, what, uh, which of the following are graphs of polynomial function? So, using the vertical line test. So, we need to have, once we uh, draw a vertical line in a graph, there must have only one intersection, no? For the x-axis and that will give you letter B as your final answer. For number 7 to 16, we're going to identify the leading coefficient, the degree of the polynomial function. And then we're going to describe the end behavior of the graph. So given 7 to 11, f of x equals x to the 4th minus 4x squared. So x to the 4th is our leading um leading term so our leading coefficient is one and one is a positive number so a sub n is greater than zero now our degree or the highest exponent is four therefore the degree is four and it is an even number so um with this be um characteristics we can say that the end behavior will be rising on both sides Sketching the graph, so we're going to have rising on both sides, okay? So, how many turning points do we have? So, we have three. One, two, and three. How are we going to get the turning points again? Degree minus one. So, four minus one is three. So, this is the graph of f of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x squared, wherein we have the end behavior rising on both sides. Then we have three turning points, 1, 2, and 3. For numbers 12 to 16, we have f of x equals to negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. So in here, we have the leading term as negative 2x cubed. So our leading coefficient is a negative 2. A negative 2 is less than 0. So a sub n is less than 0. And then the degree, the highest exponent that we have is 3. Therefore, our degree is 3. So, we have odd number. So, having the leading coefficient and the degree, no, we come up with the end behavior that is rising to the left and falling to the right. Then, we're going to scratch, uh, sketch. Rising to the left, falling to the right. So, this is the sketch. So, how many turning points do we have? So, 3 is the degree minus 1. So, we have 2 turning points. So, we have 1 and 2 turning points. For the learning task 4, we need to read and analyze and do the problem. And then, no, the bottom of the box should be closed. Use the rubric below in doing the task. So, you must have the box. You must have the solution as well. Cassidy need an open top box to display her cactus collections. The open top box can be created by cutting squares from four corners of a 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters piece of cardboard. What dimensions of the box will create an open top box with a volume of 1008 cubic centimeters? So this is the rubric. You will get four, three, two, and one based on the rubrics. And then for the criteria, the box has the needed dimensions and parts. So the box is properly labeled with the required length of, of the parts. The box is durable, the box is neat and presentable. So I need a solution, I need the box as well as your output for learning for this learning task. For this learning task, you must have the solution just like this. So this is 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, okay? So, our volume will be x times 30 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x. So, we're going to um, um, evaluate this. Then, we come up with 600x minus 100x squared plus 4x cubed. So, we come up with this. So, it is divisible by 4. So, we come up with x cubed minus 25x squared plus 150x minus 252 equals 0. So, so the value of x in here is 3. So, if we are going to check, 
3 squared minus 25 times, uh, 3 cubed minus 25 times 3 squared plus 150 times 3 minus 252 is equal to 0. Therefore, x equals 3 is correct. For our height, we have 3 centimeters, our width is 14 centimeters, and our length must be 24 centimeters. So these are the dimensions of your box. Now let's have your performance test in polynomial functions, part 1, second quarter. For this one, you need to fix and move them, then fill me up. Consider the given polynomial functions and fill the below table below. Okay, so we have the polynomial functions in here. We need to write the following in a function, a polynomial function in standard form. Once you have the standard form, it is said to be that the um, degree must be in uh, decreasing order. And then the last, one, the last part of the function must be the constant term. When you say the constant term, we don't have any variable for the constant term. Now, after having the polynomial function in standard form, we need to identify the degree. When you say it is the degree, the degree is the highest exponent. The given highest exponent is said to be your degree. Again, the degree is the highest exponent. Now, what is the leading coefficient? You can get the leading coefficient from the leading term. And what is a leading term? The leading term is a term in a function wherein you have the highest exponent or the degree. Now, the leading coefficient is the coefficient or the numerical coefficient of the leading term. And then, you're going to identify the constant term. What is the constant term? Constant term is said to be the term wherein you don't have any variable. If and only if the given, we don't have any constant number, you just need to write zero. Okay, so we are given five polynomial functions. So we need to write the function in standard form. What is the standard form? Polynomial in standard form must have, you know, um, we need to see to read the, the, the power of the variables or the powers of the variables must be in descending order. Then we're going to have the degree. The degree is the highest exponent. The leading coefficient, that's the numerical coefficient of the leading term. What's the leading term? The leading term is the term wherein we have the highest exponent or the degree. And then the constant term. So what's the constant term? It's the term without any variable. Let's take number one. f of x equals 2 minus 11x plus 2x squared. So in, in standard form, we must have 2x squared minus 11x plus 2. So we need to take a look. And first one, we have uh, exponent of 2, exponent of 1, and then we have constant term. So this one is in standard form already. Then what's the highest exponent? The highest exponent is 2. Since the highest exponent is 2, Therefore, the degree is 2. Then, where is the degree? In what term? So, that is on 2x squared. Therefore, 2x squared is said to be your leading term. What's the numerical coefficient of 2x squared? The leading coefficient, which is the leading coefficient. So, the numerical coefficient of the leading term is 2. Now, Therefore, your leading coefficient is 2. And then you're going to take a look. Oh, what is the term without any variable? So the term without any variable is 2. That's why 2 is your constant term. Okay, so let's have number 2. f of x equals 2x cubed over 3 plus 5 over 3 plus 15x. So in standard form, you must have 2x cubed over 3 plus 15x, plus 5 over 3. So, we have in here the variable x cubed. So, we have the highest exponent, 3. Now, since the highest exponent is 3, the degree of this polynomial function is 3. Where is the degree or the highest exponent? On what term? So, we have 2x cubed over 3. Therefore, 2x cubed over 3 is said to be your leading term. In your leading term, what is the numerical coefficient? The numerical, numerical coefficient is 2 thirds, right? 
Therefore, two-thirds is said to be your leading coefficient. And then, what is the term without any variable? So, 5 over 3. Therefore, 5 over 3 is said to be your constant term. Now, let's take a look at number 3. Y equals X times X squared plus 5. So, we still need to distribute X. No? Distributive property, X times X squared, X cubed. X times negative 5, so that will be negative 5X. So, this is already in standard form. What's the highest exponent? The highest exponent is 3. Therefore, that is your degree. Since the degree is 3, wherein we have it on the term X cubed, X cubed is said to be your leading term. In your leading term, what is the numerical coefficient? So, we have 1. Therefore, 1 is your leading coefficient. Now, in this polynomial function, do we have a term without any variable? None. Therefore, your constant term will be 0. Okay, let's have number 4. Y equals negative x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. So in here, we have to um, multiply it first. No? Simplify. We need to evaluate this one. No. So what are we going to do? Negative x times x is negative x. No? Times x is a negative x cubed. Okay, next. Negative x, uh, so, so we're going, going to, we can, we can have first, no, um, 3 times x is 3x. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 3x minus 3x is 0. Okay, then we're going to have the other one. 3 times negative 3, negative 9. Negative 9 times negative x is a positive 9x. That is why, now the standard form is y equals negative x cubed plus 9x. Now, what's the highest exponent? So, 3. So, that's your degree. Since the degree is 3, wherein we have it in the term negative x cubed. The leading term is negative x cubed. Okay, negative x cubed. Okay, so what is the leading coefficient or the numerical coefficient of the leading term negative x cubed? That is negative 1. Do we have no, a term without any variable? None. Therefore, our constant term is 0. Okay, let's have number 5. Y equals x plus 4 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 squared. So, let's take first um, x plus 4 times x plus 1, which will give you x squared plus 5x plus 4. No? And then the other one, we have x minus 1. So, x times x is x squared. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So, therefore, we're going to have x squared minus 2x, no? Then negative 1 squared is a positive 1. So we're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1. So we're going to just to multiply x squared plus 5x, no? Plus 4. Then multiply it with x squared minus 2x plus 4. So if we're going to multiply those things, we can get Y, uh, y equals x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 4. So in here, we can say that um, uh, the, uh, the thing that we must have to focus on is on the highest exponent. What's the highest exponent so far? No. Therefore, that's the degree. So, this is a quartic function. Now, 
uh, what will be your leading term? The leading term with the highest exponent. So the leading term will be x to the fourth. And in x to the fourth, what is the numerical coefficient? 1. Therefore, 1 is your leading coefficient. Now, do we have any term without uh, any variable? So we have 4. Therefore, your constant term is 4. Let's have activity number in your performance test. Let us determine the following, which is both polynomial functions and then sketch the graph. So we have number 1, number 4, and number 3. Okay, so let's have number 1. f of x equals to x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1. So we have the leading term, x cubed, leading coefficient 1. It is a positive Constant term is 1. Our x-intercept is negative 1 and 1. Y-intercept is equal to 1. The highest exponent is 3. That's why it's our degree. It is an odd. So, the turning point. So, we have 3 minus 1. So, we got 2. So, the end behaviors no, is falling to the left and rising to the right. So, we're going to have falling to the left and rising to the right. So, that's our the sketch of the graph. Okay, let's have number 2. f of x equals to x to the 4th plus 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 6x. So, these are the leading term, the leading coefficient. No? And then, we have in here the degree, which is an even. Number of turning points is 3. The end behavior, to so the left is rising and to the right is rising. So, this is the sketch of the graph. Okay, so let's have number 3. So we have f of x equals to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 4x plus 16. So these are the leading term. Leading coefficient. Is it positive or negative? It is, it, what is the constant? The x-intercepts, the y-intercepts. So the, the degree is 3. That's the highest exponent. Now that is an odd. So, number of turning points is 3 minus 1. So, we have 2. Then, we have falling to the right. Uh, falling to the left, rather, and rising to the right. So, we have the number of turning points. So, this is the sketch of the graph.